we are going to meet uh, Javi and um, Deborah. They will tell us about community networks in South America and uh, remote communities. We're talking about um, telephone networks, I think. And when you are in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any landlines or telephone, uh, uh, mobile phones, why not just roll your own? And they will tell us now how to do that and what um, difficulties they faced. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and they will tell us now. I hope you are listening. You can hear me. So, first start in the name of the group, I'd like to uh, to thank the organizers for the space to present our work, and also uh, thank uh, CCC Cologne and Ziegen who supported this workshop. I'd like to use the opportunity also that we are part of this cybernetic aristocracy and ask us to reflect how the principles of hacker ethics can engage with this talk. Um, so we are a group of five speakers divided in three presentations. First, Elaine and I will talk about the community network called Connect BV. It's located in a rural community in, in the Amazon rainforest. Javi will talk uh, from Oaxaca, Mexico, and we will talk about the Telecomunicaciones Indígenas Comunitarias. And Anya Orlova, who will talk about Abrajig, where they promote the implementation of digital radio in Brazil. Um, So, Elaine and I are from Brazil, um, and I'm doing my PhD in Ziegen here in Germany, where my research topic is about the use of digital technology in rural communities and how does it affect local and peripheral economies. Elaine is finishing her undergrad as a social assistant. So, peripheral means away from the center, and Akara is peripheral from the capital of the state. You can see on this map. It is also a place of an explorative relationship at the margins of the capitalism. I'm trying to pass the... So next slide is not going. So in Akara, the I was just want to see also as hadn't unsere Vortragen verloren. It looks like we have lost connection to our speaker. Let's see if we can fix that. I think I'm back. There she is. At least oh. I hear her. Video is not yet there. Um, we all love our very sturdy German internet infrastructure. <laughs> Thank you. So sorry. I don't know what happened. So uh, in Akara, the natural and ecological resources are the main source of uh, its sustenance. This is one of the activities that is the production of cassava flour. They plant, harvest, and produce many products out of the cassava. Yeah, so. 
And, but they also produce more than 20 types of uh, roots and herbs used for perfumes and spiritual baths in the community and also in the capital. More than 50 years, 15 years ago, a big international cosmetic corporation approached the community to buy local herbs in large quantities to use in their products. So today, the organic producers of Acara sell around uh, 50 tons uh, of herbs and roots in their natural state each year. So besides all the beauty of their diverse plural and traditional way of living, basic services are lacking like sewage, garbage collection, telecommunication, formal education. And in the middle of these issues, the main concern was internet. So we decided to think about and work on to bring internet infrastructure. I have some pictures to show how was the process. Uh, so first I document, documented and uh, some ways of communication, like they built this hill so they would have a better connectivity. And this is Lu Lucia, she's in, on a rainy day trying to contact her doctor or someone in the capital. And she has to be in this hill with umbrella uh, trying to communicate. Uh, the next picture is father of Eleni, and he has a business, and he's found, he's, he found this spot uh, to send the transactions collecting with his uh, credit card machine. This is also uh, interesting when walking through the forest, uh, it's surprising to stumble across a random plastic chair, and it indicates that if you sit and wait, you can uh, might have internet signal in that place. If you see closely, you can see there is a person in pink, and this is Vanda. She sells cosmetic online, and here she is on the road, waiting for the internet signal to work to communicate with her clients. So, but how could we bring internet? So we found this um, abundant tower that uh, is in the picture, is in the harbor. And we also talked to two universities, UFPI and ITA. We got some fund, we got some volunteers, activists interested in, in deploying the internet. So we, we managed to implement, and nowadays we have eight points of free internet at the school, health center, and the association of uh, organic producers. We all do, would like also to combine academic and traditional knowledge. So we built this bamboo tower as an experiment. Uh, it's not uh, working like we had to put it down and we had to put uh, made it out of metal. So this is the configuration. I'm not talking so much about the technological part, uh, but the, the, the first tower you can see is where the University of FPI is. In the middle is the one is the, the one in the harbor, and the last one is the one in the um, uh, in the association, the building of the association of organic producers. So in two years, uh, the team of four people from the community, two undergrad, uh, Lorena and Moasi activists, we engaged in exchanging knowledge uh, during these years. And this is Kaká, Po, Bia, and Elaine, and they are workers of the community network, Connect BV. They work hard not only to deploy and maintain the internet working, but also to defend the replacement of their homes by power lines and roads. They also feel the pressure to move away from the forest because of formal education and better condition of life, but they want to resist to the process of cultural externalization. Well, we are really proud of this knowledge exchange, but we are afraid that this can be an instrument of domination. What is the, the time needed to the patient? Is it really a way of empowerment? Is this enough? Why teaching how to use the technology is more important than helping them to create their own? And how to make it in a different way? Based on Alvaro Vieira Pinto, who says that technology within a hierarchical society will tend to reinforce hierarchy and domination. I think that 
Facebook, SpaceX, Google are promising internet in the Amazon region, and this prevalence of large US-based companies in providing internet access across the globe has been portrayed as a form of digital colonialism, especially in, in areas where government in the Amazon region. Oops. Uh, lack uh, resources or political will to provide public infrastructure. And I see the need to critique imaginaries. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if you still listen to me, but um, so I need. Um, I think we need to critique imaginary such Silicon Valley companies. Uh, these cybernetic community members are now entrepreneurs, and with the facility of digital access and extra time available, they feel the pressure that they should work more. So I will talk about this process of working more. Uh, there is this opportunity uh, of selling cosmetics through catalog and um, in contracts to produce cassava and herbs. Selling cosmetics is, is a new economic activity in Nakara. Most of cosmetics consultants and cons costumers are human, uh, women. These consultants serve as uh, middle women of cosmetics that are displayed in a catalog that customers choose from. In the past, consultants had exclusive license to sell these products using a physical magazine. But more recently, most companies have opened online shops where everybody can purchase their cosmetics. No more magazines or papers. However, many still prefer to buy via consultants or are actually re reliant on them as they lack access to the infrastructure and I will plan it better. This region and the islands around it all lack zip codes and postal service. So the consultants had to be creative with the logistics of selling cosmetics. Each consultant ordered the cosmetics online and uses different trustful contacts to make it happen. Some use the address of relatives in the capital, uh, but they have to travel to the capital to collect the order. They are shipped there and deliver it to the client. The travel costs are not added to the product's price, so she pays from her own pocket around five euros per month. Some other consultants work closely with someone else in the city that takes care of the, all logistics. And people usually, they are not interested in learning how to use the internet. Other consultants use the address of business or restaurants of families and friends where the postal service is reached and inform their clients that the product has arrived in a specific place so the clients can collect. So this is, this activity takes a lot of effort from the consultant. However, it is not considered a business. It is a way of helping with the income of the family and sometimes a way for women to be less financially dependent on their husbands. Vanessa, who is also a citizen science and helped me with my academic research, sells co cosmetic and cassava products through her WhatsApp status. So she discovered in this picture uh, that I took that in the corner of her room, she can receive the orders from her clients and communicate with them. This is an example of WhatsApp status that it's really common from the uh, people from that village uh, in Akara. Uh, they promote their catalog, their products, the services. And WhatsApp is their favorite app in Brazil, uh, in the world, but specifically in Brazil because telecoms do not charge uh, for data used uh, to access uh, WhatsApp. Um, this story about the catalog shows the complexity of such community network interventions. It shows that the technology is only a small part of the infrastructure of anything that is done with the internet. 
there is a social infrastructure of community life and lack of other infrastructures, so, such as zip codes. It also shows that connectivity does not equal good as the social infrastructure. There are big challenges for communities like Akara on their future and what they want their life to be. Connectivity brings new opportunities, but also problems. Something Paul said to make me make this very clear. And this is Paul. Uh, it is really complicated. At the same time that we want to be in the age of digital technology, we want to have that connection to the past. But we could not reach the border between the two times where we can use the knowledge of the past and of the present. And how can we make them pride of their knowledge as, for example, the work that community of Javi in Oaxaca will show? So this is a, a, just a picture that I would like to share with you. It's an, uh, a company, uh, they uh, produce aluminum and rene renewable energy from Norway. And for to make this company work, they need a lot of electricity. And for that, they build dams in, in the Amazon, and they also have to pass these power lines and to connect the dams to the mining company. So now we're gonna go to Eleni, that's just gonna show how is it in the, the community and also how does it pass in the community? Not sure if Elaine is here. Elaine, você pode ficar online com vídeo? Oi. Oi. Pode. So, so this is Elaine and she will show Você consegue colocar teu vídeo, Elaine? Não, não vai. Está dizendo que está bloqueado. Hum. You wanna try? Você quer tentar de novo? So she's having some problems to to make her video on. But I think while she's trying to make this, maybe we can pass to Javi, and then once we figure out, Javi, are you are you ready? I'm gonna just change here. See, yes, there. Hola, mi nombre, mi nombre es Javier, soy originario de Oaxaca, México. So, hi, my name is Javier, and I'm originally from Oaxaca, México. Colaboro en una organización llamada Telecomunicaciones Indígenas Comunitarias. I work in an organization called Telecomunicaciones Indígenas Comunitarias, also Telecomunicaciones uh, Indígenas Community Indigenous Telecommunication. Tuvo su origen eh, con base a varios proyectos, eh, organizaciones que son rizomáticas, redes AC y algunas comunidades asociadas previamente. So this uh, has an origin in different different projects, uh, rizomática. Comunicadas y muy alejadas. Oaxaca has uh, 570 municipalities. Uh, there are 17 uh, languages spoken there, and uh, the communities are like really dispersed and uh, sometimes uncommunicated. Nuestra organización cuenta con una concesión que es histórica a nivel de uso social indígena. 
So our organization uh, has an historical uh, agreement or concession uh, as being indigenous. Previamente teníamos una concesión de dos años, que fue una concesión piloto, que unas 21 comunidades se unieron y enviaron una carta al gobierno. Before we had a, a pilot um, agreement, um, 21 communities uh, joined together and wrote a letter to the government so that they could uh, had, have access, access uh, to uh, some uh, um, frequency. Ahora tenemos una concesión para hacer uso de telecomunicaciones de 30 años y una concesión de uso de frecuencias de 850 MHz, eh, especialmente para GSM en este momento, que es de 15 años y abarca cinco estados del país. So now we have a concession and agreement for 30 years for the use of telecommunication and also uh, another concession or agreement uh, for 15 years for the use of the frequency of 850 MHz uh, GSM that is going to uh, cover five states. Tenemos una cobertura de en donde acompañamos a 17 comunidades con aproximadamente 4600 personas usuarias en 80 localidades. Uh, we have a broad coverage. We uh, joined 17 communities uh, where uh, approximately 4,600 people live uh, in 80 places. ¿Cómo funciona? Tenemos un equipo con la radio base en un punto remoto y la oficina central en, en algún centro de la comunidad en donde está todo el cerebro de la información. So how does this work? Uh, well, we have a, a tower uh, in, in, in the outside that connects to the office in the community uh, where it connects to get the information through, uh, through the connection through antennas. El, las llamadas de larga distancia funcionan a través del protocolo VoIP. A través de internet salen las llamadas de larga distancia. The long distance calls uh, work with uh, through a proto the vo voice over IP protocol uh, over the internet. Ocupamos proveedores eh, locales o en casos contrarios eh, internet satelital, pero no es muy bueno el internet satelital. Uh, we also use uh, local providers for uh, satellite internet, but although the internet is not very good. Las llamadas locales eh, y mensajería únicamente funcionan entre comunidades porque no podemos rentar números por, para cada persona. Local calls or calls eh, or messages eh, only work throughout communities because then we don't have uh, so many numbers. ¿Cómo funciona a nivel económico un poco? Eh, hay una cuota de recuperación mensual de 42 pesos, aproximadamente 2 dólares, divididos en 25 pesos para la comunidad, un 60%, 15 pesos eh, que son 35% para la organización, 2 pesos para un fondo de emergencia en caso de problemas que sean causados por clima o eh, algún daño en algún equipo. So, how does it work this economically? We have a a recovery fee um, monthly of 42 pesos, which is around two dollars, US dollars, which is divided in three uh, in three items. Uh, the first is 25 pesos that are for the community, uh, 15 pesos for the organization, and two pesos for an emergency fund, which is uh, used in case of uh, climate issues or uh, natural disasters. Hacemos uso de software libre y de código abierto. Proveemos el uso de herramientas libres, así como movimiento de software libre. 
we use uh, free software and open source software and we promote uh, the use of uh, free tools uh, and uh, the movement of free software. Algunos principales desafíos que hemos tenido eh, son condiciones del terreno y el clima, dispersión de las comunidades alejadas, que se encuentran muy alejadas unas con las otras, pocos recursos con los que cuentan las comunidades para adquirir los equipos. So, what are our main challenges? Um, first is the conditions of the terrain, of the land and the climate, uh, the dispersion of the communities among themselves, uh, and the few resources that they have, the communities, to acquire new equipment. Hay unos desafíos que son generar también el interés en las personas jóvenes. No existe una comunidad eh, grande para compartir experiencia, a diferencia de la tecnología Wi-Fi, y generar contenido entendible para generar el conocimiento en las comunidades. Um. Other challenges that have been uh, awakening interest among younger people, uh, that there is no, uh, no big community to share experiences such as, uh, the, such as the case of the technology of Wi-Fi, and uh, the, to generate uh, some contents that are uh, easy to access for all the people so that the knowledge in the, among the, the communities uh, can grow. Otros desafíos que también tenemos es el esquema, generar un esquema de expansión fuera del estado de Oaxaca eh, y del país. Para hacer uso de frecuencias, el uso de frecuencias que, que hacemos son frecuencias eh, concesionadas que necesitan permisos. So, any other challenges that we have are the expansion scheme uh, that we plan to outside the state of uh, Oaxaca uh, to, to, to the country. Um, the use of concessionate frequencies, so these frequencies that are regulated um, by the authorities. Otros desafíos son la alfabetización digital para las comunidades que, que conozcan el, cómo funciona desde una computadora hasta la red. La conectividad limitada también eh, en muchas zonas es muy, muy, muy limitada. A veces no logras tener ni un mega hasta ni tres megas de, de descarga. Other challenges have been the creation of some uh, digital literacy among the communities so that they know how the computer works or how the net they were, uh, the network works and so on and um, the limited connectivity in some places uh, in some regions you don't have any three uh, um, megabytes uh, of download uh, capacity. En el futuro estamos haciendo justo eh, pruebas con, vamos a hacer pruebas e instalaciones con LTE, con el 4G. Um, so in our future, so our future plans are uh, doing tests and uh, installations of uh, LTE and the LTE network 4G. En estos momentos estamos, eh, bueno, hacemos uso de, de programas de software de Osmocom y también vamos a hacer uso también el tema de 4G. Y muchas gracias a la gente de Osmocom también, y a la gente que apoya todo esto, el proyecto, directa o indirectamente. So right now we are uh, using some uh, software tools from, the, uh, from Osmocom. Uh, which are helping you us to buy uh, to build uh, 4G and uh, now I would like to thank them and all the people that are working uh, directly or indirectly with the project uh, that are allowing us to do our jobs. Cómo apoyar el proyecto eh, con el desarrollo y mejorar también las herramientas que que hacen nosotros hay gente que lo que vemos y usamos herramientas que Los desarrolladores crean. So, which way can uh, can we get support? One is to get the to get development and improve the tools that we have. Um, to the, the, the tools that we have um, to call for developers for doing that. 
También otras formas de apoyar es generar propuestas o mandarnos propuestas de, de herramientas para redes internas en las comunidades que podamos promover también. You can also help us uh, giving us as hints about uh, tools that we can use for building uh, internal networks in the communities. También pueden generar como propuestas de privacidad y seguridad para que podamos eh, promover también en estas en estas redes. And also you can uh, provide uh, proposals for improving privacy and security in this uh, in these networks and this com in these communities. Contacto tenemos la página de TIC que está en el www.ticac.org rizomadec página de Rizomática, a los correos también pueden contactarnos y pueden revisar el código de, de las plataformas que usamos en el GitHub de Rizomática. Y si quieren hablar con nosotros, pueden ver la web de TIC, Tecnologías Indígenas Comunitarias y Rizomática. Pueden escribirnos un email y pueden también checar el código que estamos trabajando en el GitHub. Ahora, ahora podemos, les voy a presentar un video, espero que les guste. Now I'm going to show you a video, uh, I hope that you like it. ready <laughs> while we check the video Elaine você quer mostrar Como é que eu faço para botar a câmera a traseira Um not sure I don't say So she's trying so she's she's gonna This is the So this is the, uh, yeah, a torre. this is the tower. A escola, o ponto lá em cima. The school, she's showing the, the internet point. Aqui um ramal. This is the, the road. O linhão, né, de energia. The, the, the power line that passes on top of the, the, the village. Ali a torre. And that's the tower. Para lá é, é o posto de saúde onde a gente tem mais um ponto de internet. I have uh, the health center where there is one more internet point. Yes, sir. And that's it. Obrigada, <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> She's saying that it's too hot. <laughs> okay. Do we have the video to show? Espera, que eu não sei mexer aqui. Já. Terminei. Ah, não, ainda falta aqui dentro. In any time you can put the video for if you want. But she's showing the school inside of the school. Essa aqui é a escola. This is the school. Eu só não consegui a chave de lá daquela sala, mas eu vou mostrar que é aqui que fica 
o equipamento de internet. She didn't get the key, but that's the door where the equipments are inside of this room. So every time she needs to configure or uh, restart a computer, she needs to get the key in the house of someone to come and do it. She's asking for the keyboard. So. Obrigada, Elaine. De nada. <laughs> So maybe should we start with Anya and then we show the video? Hello, uh, I hope you can all hear me well. Um, uh, my name is Anya. Um, I'm originally from Russia, but for the last five years I've been based in Brazil and I've been working with, uh, with a group of activists um, that uh, later took uh, shape of a Brazilian association of digital radio. And today I will tell you a story of the development and implementation uh, of uh, high-frequency telecommunication systems in Brazil. Um, so, uh, high-frequency radios uh, is a two-way uh, telephony radios, or in Portuguese it's called radiofonia, is a po uh, point to multi-point broadcasting that allows every station in the network uh, to receive and transmit communication among each other. So that means that um, if one uh, radio station in the network is talking, all the other radio stations can hear, and they can also communicate back. Uh, here on this picture, you can see uh, an example of the radio station that is very commonly used in the Amazon region of Brazil. Uh, and uh, you can see also people actually talking on the radio. Um, Okay, so um, just a second. So uh, the high frequency uh, is a synonym for the term of shortwave in the context of radio bands. Uh, here you can see some more pictures of the uh, installation and uh, uh, workshops or training that was given to the communities in the Amazon forest. Uh, that was done within one of the projects that our association um, carried out in uh, 2016. Um, I, I didn't really give an introduction. Um, I will first talk um, about the um, high frequency radios in the Amazon context, and then I will present the sequence of the projects which uh, led to the development of the um, high frequency system that is currently being being in use by some of the uh, forest and traditional communities and also um, that is the current state of art of the civilian use of high frequency radios in the brazilian amazon uh, okay so um next just a second so here you can see uh, uh, um, an example of the installation uh, of the high frequency uh, radio station. Uh, it, is, uh, it consists of the, of the radio itself, uh, of the battery that powers it, and of the solar panel. Uh, and as uh, Deborah already talked, um, uh, within the Amazon context, as there is no any infrastructure or no electricity grid or any sort of sources of energy, uh, these radio stations are powered by the solar panel. So the installation of the solar panel uh, is one of the first steps um, of the setup of the station. And I also forgot, for, forgot to mention, it's also, there is also an, an antenna 
for the transmission and re uh, reception of the signal. Um, subject, this project that is already going on for uh, since I joined for uh, over five years uh, initially started uh, in 2013 um, and um, uh, it started in the state of Acre in Brazil. Uh, the name of the project uh, is Fonia Jurua Digital Radio Network. And uh, the project initially was based on the request of 24 local forest and um, rural communities. Uh, this request was initially formulated by these communities in 2009, 2010. Uh, and it was specifically articulated that these communities want radio telephony or hagiosponias. Um, uh, uh, it took some time to, to get the funding to, to, to purchase the equipment. And the first attempts uh, were taken uh, around 2013 to go to, to that area. Uh, and to uh, start the installation of the first stations. And until today, this project is ongoing. It's a, it's a collaboration, it's a collaborative effort between the local communities of the uh, Alta Jurua Extractive Reserve in the state of Acre and uh, uh, between radio activists and researchers from various Brazilian universities, for example, from Unicampi, UNESP, University of Brasilia. Uh, so this uh, it's still an ongoing effort to develop a communication infrastructure in the rainforest areas of the Brazilian Amazon. And the main idea or the framework is that it's, it's a do-it-yourself autonomous wireless community network, if to sum it up. And here you can see, uh, I tried to put the main points, not to take too much time, uh, about the socioeconomic and political background of these areas. Uh, today I will talk about, I will start, uh, I already started talking about the Acre, one of the states of Brazilian Amazon, and I will also talk about uh, the state of Pará, where another project is based. Uh, but I think the, what Deborah has already presented uh, the setup or the context is very similar. So uh, one of the main characteristics that we have, we have to highlight is that there is no electricity grid or there is no any sort of telephony infrastructure. There is no mobile coverage. So for example, in case of uh, Deborah's project, uh, there is a periphery where people still manage to receive some signal the projects that I, uh, I will present today, we're talking about communities located um, in the forest of the uh, uh, of Brazilian Amazon. Uh, the only communication or transportation connection of the communication mean is the, the rivers. So people get to their villages or to their settlements by boats and there is uh, literally there is nothing else, there is no, uh, no wires, there is no electricity, so we are not even talking about mobile coverage. At the same time, uh, the only communication um, uh, mean is, uh, there is a satellite communication, uh, satellite connectivity, which is extremely expensive in that context, so it's not affordable and it's not an option. Uh, and another aspect that uh, became very um, urgent in the last years is the lack of stable uh, basic um, support from the state. So, for example, there is no uh, medical or educational services or health services that people can rely on. And uh, um, uh, often, for example, children that have to go to school, they are supposed to be picked up by, by boats to be taken to the school. Uh, this uh, connection doesn't work uh, for various reasons. For example, there might be no uh, petrol for the boats or the boat is broke, uh, has broken or other reasons. And the same goes for the health assistance or medical assistance. So often people... Uh, are forced to move out of the of the forest areas to the urban areas 
just to be able uh, to receive the most vital and the most basic assistance uh, or services. Um, this is to also show um, uh, the, the lifestyle or how, how people live in, in, inside those forest communities. Uh, and when I talk about forest communities, uh, I, I talk about both indigenous communities and about traditional communities. Traditional communities are those who uh, moved uh, many years ago to these areas for the production of rubber. Uh, when it was still a big industry in Brazil, and uh, who uh, um, settled in these areas. Uh, but so we cannot really say that it, it, this, these are the people who relocated from other parts of Brazil. So they are, uh, but during this time, they also mixed with the indigenous people. So um, they are not really, well, not, maybe not a good way to say it, but they're not. 100% Brazilian anymore, so we cannot really identify them as indigenous, but they are also not uh, really, it's, it's like a mix uh, what happened during these years. And you can see on the picture on the, on the left, there is a, a gun, which is uh, very common for every house in the forest community, uh, because men go to hunt almost every day. And uh, on the right, uh, you can see the stove. That's how uh, usually uh, the food is prepared in the houses, uh, by using wood and um, it's uh, put on fire and then it's cooked. So the, the conditions are very basic. And at the same time, uh, what I wanted to show with these pictures is that people spend a lot of time attaining to their, to their needs of um, uh, providing food, cooking, uh, and taking care of other necessities like washing, for example, cleaning dishes. Um, if we compare it to our modern life, this, these responsibilities take much more time in comparison to urban setup, urban settings. Uh, here you can see a girl, she's um, reading one of her class books. Uh, so there is, as I already mentioned, um, the materials, there is access to educational materials, etc. But it's often the case that children stay at home and don't receive uh, the, the necessary amount of uh, classes that they're supposed to receive. And at the same time, you can see that the, the environment of the house is very simple. It's usually made uh, out of one tree uh, usually there is one big tree that is assigned to a family that they cut and they manage to build a whole house with three, four rooms. Uh, so uh, to reflect a bit more on socioeconomic impact of the, this HF connectivity projects, um, the, the local community members are asking for this type of assistance, uh, uh, not just with connectivity, uh, but also with sustainable extraction with farming and various forms of businesses, uh, and also uh, to receive uh, health and medical assistance, access to education, and sometimes capacity building. Uh, due to poor local services, the network could provide assistance and supplementary content to local teachers and doctors. And there are examples already in some of the communities that we work with that uh, teachers from the schools and the nurses are engaging actively into the use of the network to receive more information and to be able to communicate to the uh, urban centers over the network. Uh, there is also, um, uh, the, the network is capable of connecting families in the forest with the urban areas and provide access uh, and exchange of political and economical information such as news, prices of various products that are being uh, usually uh, uh, sold from the forest to the, to the urban areas. Uh, and what became uh, very urgent uh, uh, recently in the, in the last years is the request to have a, this sort of communication infrastructure for the monitoring of illegal activities. Uh, right now, Amazon is uh, going through, 
I would say, um, environmental crisis. And uh, there are a lot of cases of illegal logging, illegal mining, and uh, extreme forms of extractivism, when people are saying that uh, there are so many people from the urban areas coming to hunt um, various species of the animals from the forest, that uh, people, the, that the forest communities often start to, to sense the lack of, of, of food for themselves. Um, so to, to be able to monitor these activities and report them to the authorities, uh, the, the system uh, proved already to be very helpful. I'm sorry, I'll just bring some water. So um, to sum up uh, a bit on the, um, the first project that started in Acre, uh, I can say that um, what we did uh, with, uh, after some trials and after some trips to in, uh, installation of the stations, uh, in 2016 we were success. We would manage to successfully accomplish trials with the digital transmission system uh, based on um, digital radio mondial standard. Uh, and the, the solution for digital transmission is composed by an embedded computer, an interface to the radio and the SDR software. And what we managed to do in 2016 in Acre is we managed to send text files and images over the radio in the uh, uh, ATM HF band to, location, the, to two locations that were apart around, around 100 kilometers. So we basically managed to transmit data over HF radio, uh, digital data. Uh, and I wanted just to say uh, that um, the project, this solution, um, uh, yeah, I think I already said that, sorry. So, um, uh, so this first project uh, that was, that, that is based in, um, uh, in Acre, uh, was supported by the University, uh, of, by UNESCO. Uh, it's a university, uh, a Brazilian university. It started, the, this support by the university, uh, this project started as an academic project and the academic framework since 2014. And uh, already since 2015, uh, that six radio stations have been in regular use by the local communities uh, without any major problems or discrepancies. And um, in 2016, uh, these trials were accomplished, and uh, the first um, uh, successful trials were accomplished that we managed to transmit digital data uh, on a big distance. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that the project uh, always has one main station in the urban area, which serves, serves as, a, as a gateway to the, all the forest communities to provide assistance and support. Okay, so... Uh, so, uh, in, to, in 2017, um, we started um, working with other communities in the, in the state of Pará, in Altamira, uh, and um, also located in the extractive reserves. Extractive reserve is a concept that was developed in Brazil where uh, local communities can live and uh, with the condition of um, non-harmful non -harmful extraction. So they can hunt and they can fish for their own purposes, for their needs to, to provide uh, food for themselves and their families. But they, for example, cannot cut trees uh, and cannot um, basically do an ex severe extraction of the, of the areas that they populate. Uh, and uh, uh, we started to work with other communities also uh, in extractive reserves in the state of Pará, uh, which again, you could um, characterize that some of them are indigenous and some of them are local or traditional communities. 
they, they face the same uh, problem of uh, lack of any sort of uh, infrastructure in their in, in these reserves or any sort uh, any forms of con connectivity apart from HF radios that in some communities have been in use for decades. So uh, in a way, this technology that we were um, that uh, our community connectivity networks are based on, they are not really new for this context or for these communities. And it serves as a as a uh, advantage in terms of uh, appropriation because there is no fear of uh, of using the systems because people are already very familiar with using the Fornias radios. Uh, so, uh, and another aspect that is very important to note uh, in terms of this. Um, uh, connectivity solutions is that uh, the majority of population of the forest uh, and rural communities uh, have smartphones and although there is no uh, reception of the network or there is no connectivity in the forest they use these devices uh, to uh, again when they go to urban areas or uh, when they stay in the forest it's a it's a storage device and they exchange files or photos or videos or uh, different sorts of information over Bluetooth. So uh, when we were developing these systems, uh, this was uh, already considered um, as part of the, of the solution. Uh, and now I will just uh, give um, a bit more detail. Um, the, the project that uh, the second, uh, I, I think I, we can separate um, our efforts of what we're trying to achieve here in Brazil of developing this uh, high frequency radio systems uh, into three steps. The, our first step was in the state of Acre. Uh, then we started uh, expanding and working with other communities in the state of Altamira. Um, Meantime, developing the uh, digital interface to connect the radio part uh, with, the, with the interface that people could use, the easy to use interface, user friendly interface, to where, uh, through, through which they could upload the digital data and then send it over the radio. So this system consists of two, consists of two parts. First, it's the analog radios that people can use anytime to, to talk. And the second part, which is more recent that we are still developing, uh, is the digital interface uh, using which people can already upload uh, um, uh, files to the system and send them. And then they can also uh, download files to their computers or to their smartphones. Uh, so uh, if we're talking about this initiative or this effort from an activist perspective, uh, as I already start, uh, said, uh, this effort started uh, in 2013. There were various trips to the Amazon forest, uh, installations of the radios, trainings and workshops, uh, discussions with the communities, how they want to implement this project, in which communities, in which houses of the communities. Uh, and uh, the first main phase uh, is the Phonius Juroa project that took place in Acre. Uh, I, I don't know if this presentation will be available later. I provided some references to the to the reports that we published uh, with more information if somebody is interested to, to read about it later because there is no time to cover all this uh, in this presentation. Uh, so the, here is just some pictures of the, of the main project and who are until today participating and providing assistance to the communities and you can see on the on the right hand side is again a, a house uh, with the with the station with the radio station installed uh, for the everyday use um, so okay and then the second the second project which was the continuation uh, is the pilot project of the of the Hermes prototype system 
Uh, Hermes is an abbreviation for a high frequency emergency and rural multimedia exchange system. Uh, so basically this is the digital interface, if to, to, to put it in simple words. Uh, it was uh, developed and tested in 2018 in Oaxaca together with Hisomachica. Uh, and what we did, we participated in a Mozilla Wireless Innovation Challenge for Network Society. Uh, and uh, thanks to that grant, we managed to develop and test the system. So later, after the test is, tests were completed successfully and we managed to assemble and test the whole setup, uh, this upgraded system that was further developed was already uh, installed in the Altamira community networks. Uh, and, and this what I call the third project. Uh, but actually, if you look at it, they're all interlinked and interwined, and there is no like really, um, uh, 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 you cannot really separate them in terms of time sequence. They, it's all kind of mixed, but just to give some clearance of how it all developed. Uh, so, uh, and the project is, we called it Connecting Amazon Forest Indigenous and Local Communities Through High Frequency Radio Technology. Uh, it's, it took place, but it's still taking place in Teja Bume ter territory that combines free extractive reserves uh, with 80 communities scattered uh, on a huge territory. Um, uh, and some communities are, are apart. It takes from two to four days by boat to arrive from one community to another. Uh, and here on the picture, you can actually see that uh, um, there is the, the, the interface box. Um, it's a touch screen um, uh, interface uh, with um, compiled with Raspberry Pi and and other other technical parts that I will not be able to explain right now. Uh, okay, again, I provided a link to a more detailed visual report that you can also access on our website. It's uh, abrajiki.org.br. Uh, okay, and to talk about the uh, autonom uh, autonomy of these systems, the idea was always to provide a local uh, a sol autonomous solution that fits uh, the local needs of the com of the communities. So from the very beginning, it was based on the request of the local communities, uh, and we wanted to to create a system that that is not dependent on any kind of um, provider uh, or any um, uh, yeah telecommunication service provider, be it state or private. And uh, uh, the, the, the Hermes system is also um, secure. It has GPG encryption, uh, but this, this only goes to the, to the digital part. When people are using the analog part of the system and talking, still the, the rest of the network can hear what they're talking about. But in, in, if they want to exchange files, digital files, or for example, they can make a uh, simultaneous recording, like a voice message, and transmit it to another community, this message will be encrypted. Um, uh, and again, to reflect a little bit on the on what Deborah was already talking about, um, uh, connecting to the, the next billion rhetoric, that um, uh, again, we are uh, we are seeing this project within the framework of community network that can be defined as done for the people and by the people of this community. It's always been a collaborative effort, uh, and we are trying to. Uh, our role here is to help implement the, the wishes and needs of of the local communities. Again, also to provide training and to teach how they can operate and use this equipment but not really to impose it. And uh, so to, to stick to the uh, bottom-up approach uh, of this system. Uh, we're also working uh, a lot on the sustainability and replicability of this network. So far, there are some technical issues. Uh, again, as I said, the HF technology, for this is the first uh, uh, HF 
connectivity system for the civilian use. So there is really little development and we can say that these projects are the pioneers in this area. So of course there is no like off the shelf solutions that we can just buy. So we need to develop some uh, software and hardware parts uh, that are still not working that good, but the system functions. And uh, if we relate to um, what we're trying to oppose with this uh, effort, again, is the uh, solutions or initiatives, uh, top-down initiatives like internet.org by Facebook or Free Basics by other similar initiatives. Uh, and uh, a little bit about the use of spectrum. Um, uh, for, within the context of the Amazon forest, short wave band is very good and useful in the forest because the the way uh, HF radio if HF radios work is that the uh, the wave goes and it bounces with the ionosphere, and so it goes like this. And there is no problem with, uh, the, with the forest. So, for example, if we take uh, GSM uh, networks, the signal just doesn't pass through the forest because there are trees. So um, th that's not really a solution for this environment. When we talk about um, short wave band, uh, there is no problem with this. So the, the wave goes up and then it bounces and comes back. So the reception is much better. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the problem with the civilian use, uh, today mostly military projects use it, use the uh, HF uh, or high frequency uh, bands, uh, and um, there is almost no uh, commercial interest in the use of HF, so there is no, very little development. Uh, in terms of social and political implications of HF band, uh, it provides uh, connectivity, um, fast connectivity that now, nowadays is becoming really vital for the very isolated or underserved rural communities of the Amazon region because when it comes to uh, illegal activities or the fires that are becoming uh, a new norm uh, within this context, people need uh, a fast and reliable uh, means of communication to ask for, for help or to report or to coordinate their actions. And in this case, HF uh, uh, band use is very useful and, and reliable. Uh, the problem, uh, the problems that arise or that are, that are persistent since the develop, uh, beginning of the development of these projects is that uh, here in Brazil, uh, there the legislation or the regulation of the spectrum hasn't been really updated since 1970s, specifically for the licenses for communal use of, uh, uh, of networks. And what we're facing now, and apart from the technical um, development issues or struggles, is that uh, a policy, a need of uh, update of policy and the regulation. So today in Brazil, for example, it is possible to obtain a license to operate a radio system. However, it is, um, it is extremely bureaucratic. Uh, it is also uh, quite costly if, we'll, if we um, look at it from the perspective of the forest communities. For them, it's, it's very expensive. They need to hire um, an engineer who, who has to prepare a special project to analyze this uh, network, to analyze the frequency, and then to kind of issue a, a conclusion that they can receive the license. So uh, therefore, um, it's really not easy for, 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 the, for the indigenous or traditional communities to receive licenses to operate these kind of networks. Uh, and uh, so what we can conclude is basically that there is no an affordable or an easy to get way to obtain licenses. Uh, and in this context, uh, what is still to be done uh, in terms of policy is that we, we still need to advocate for a, a regulator, regulatory framework on community connectivity. 
and um, we need to make um, to bring this notion of licenses to operate a network uh, um, for example an HF network and a license to radio spectrum usage into the into the field of policy making and legislation in Brazil Uh, and just to conclude, um, I wanted to say that uh, what we did or what we are trying, what we are attempting to, to, to do with these projects is to, to uh, ally development and evolution of digital services that are running on top of the already existing uh, high frequency radio technology that has been already in use for decades in the Amazon forest. Uh, so this solution, it complements local technologies and networks instead of turning them obsolete. And it is collaboratively, co collaboratively designed uh, with the active participation of the communities themselves, uh, with their participation in the development and the innovation of these applications that run on top of the digital infrastructure. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention and once again, thank you very much for, the, for this opportunity to participate and present uh, our, our project, our association and what we're trying to do here in Brazil. And uh, in case you want to get in touch or to get more information about what we're doing, I put my contact details here on the slide. Thank you very much. So let's see if you can hear me better now. Yes. Great. So thank you. Thank you very much for this very interesting and um, profound talk. Uh, interestingly, we got only one question so far in, the, in our feedback pad, which is, what is your approach to grow the community and share your knowledge? Anna, do you want to refer? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, what, what is our approach to growth and sharing? Just to repeat, please. Could you please repeat the question? What is your approach to grow, grow the community so to get more people involved, I guess, and share your knowledge so that they can uh, participate, participate more effectively? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, um, one, one observation that I took from, from these projects uh, is that it is very important to be well connected uh, within, the, within the local, uh, local environment and with the, with the communities. Uh, so, for example, uh, when we, we arrived to the forest and stayed, uh, usually you stay in one of the houses of the community, it takes time for people to get used to you, it's, it takes time for people to start really talking, to start sharing, uh, and it's a it's a process first of all. And uh, what we are doing, we are organizing uh, workshops, or like with, the, with with every community, we're organizing a workshop and a training for every member of the community uh, that uh, he or she can try using the the, the radios, sending the files. And uh, uh, by this, trying to engage uh, every member and uh, leaving this notion in, uh, one, uh, of, of continued uh, conversation or interaction. And for this reason, specifically, we always put one station, one radio station in the urban area. So in case there are some problems, uh, we have always a channel to provide assistance. Uh, another part of the project uh, is that uh, there are um, uh, local um, uh, mem uh, representatives of the uh, local communities who, are, who volunteered to serve as, um, um, well, they are researchers and also they are like technical assistants who are always there to provide help. So, for example, if something breaks, 
or something stopped working well, uh, they usually go to the, to the community to provide assistance. Uh, apart from that, uh, we are now working on developing um, a project uh, uh, to create a more inclusive and more open, also the gender inclusive uh, network of users, trying to engage uh, more indigenous and traditional uh, community representatives here in Brasilia, in the capital, where a lot of advocacy work is happening and a lot of political uh, engagement is taking place to, uh, to, to provide uh, um, an empowerment or capacity building so that later this uh, indigenous and traditional uh, community leaders or representatives can already take these solutions to their communities. Uh, um, I think these are the, the main points and in terms of uh, knowledge sharing and learning there are various initiatives that are being developed within the Altamira uh, project in uh, in state of Pará, uh, engaging into um, also um, th there is a program that some young people within the communities they are uh, participating in the higher education programs so uh, they stay most of the time in the in their communities but then they have to communicate with their professors and they are using the network to exchange um, to send their um, assignments to 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 receive uh, their tasks their materials uh, over the network i think this is one of the probably best examples in terms and as i said the the, pro the project is still evolving and uh, we will have a workshop later this year again to meet with the community representatives to understand better how we can accommodate their needs for again education and other uh, services that they want to receive over the network thank you okay that was a quite extensive answer um, unfortunately we are quite a bit late on time uh, and questions are just coming in now uh, so a rem remark in the pad is a link to a additional video that has not been shown and um, if you want to you can click there and uh, watch it later and um, I think it's going to be a bit close now to take all these questions that are not just coming up now this I'm, I'm really sorry <laughs> This is a little bit unfortunate of, from the timing, but maybe um, people can find you via social network or contact you directly um, to get their questions answered. Would that work? Yes. Totally. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, so uh, as, an, as a hint, uh, we have also a possibility to do self-organized sessions. So maybe if you want to do a spontaneous uh, voice meeting, voice video call um, later today or tomorrow, um, you feel free to set one up. And um, until then, I would say thank you for the talk. Very interesting and have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sembrando Telefonía Celular Comunitaria Sembrar significa poner las semillas en el suelo para que a partir de estas se desarrollen nuevas plantas. Todo inicia con el sueño de sembrar para cosechar el alimento que necesita la familia y la comunidad. La telefonía celular comunitaria representa un sueño colectivo para sembrar un sistema de comunicación propio, libre y accesible. Este servicio permite el ejercicio del derecho a la comunicación individual y colectiva y contribuye a la autonomía y libre determinación de los pueblos indígenas. La mano vuelta. Sembramos con la ayuda de la comunidad. La comunidad adquiere, instala, opera y administra su propia red de telefonía celular con la ayuda del equipo operativo de TICAC. Empezamos informando a las autoridades o personas interesadas en saber todo lo relacionado con la telefonía celular comunitaria. 
Después, en asamblea, la comunidad decide si quiere juntarse como socio de TIC e instalar el servicio de telefonía celular comunitaria. Seleccionar el terreno. De la selección correcta de nuestro terreno, tendremos una buena siembra y una mejor cosecha. En la telefonía celular comunitaria, la comunidad con el apoyo del equipo operativo de TIC-AC seleccionan el mejor sitio donde se instalarán los equipos para lograr el mayor alcance y la mejor cobertura. El área tecnológica realiza un estudio de viabilidad para saber si la comunidad cuenta con las condiciones necesarias para operar una red. Preparar el terreno. Queremos lograr que la comunicación crezca en el mejor lugar y con las condiciones adecuadas. Y para ello, es importante abonar y conseguir así que nuestro terreno tenga una sustancia rica que pueda alimentar a las raíces para que germinen en buenas condiciones. En la telefonía celular, los abonos consisten en la capacitación y compromiso de la comunidad y de quienes operan y administran la red comunitaria. El ritual. Bajo la cosmovisión de los pueblos indígenas, pedimos permiso a la Madre Tierra para sembrar. En la telefonía celular hacemos lo mismo. Entregamos ofrenda a la Madre Tierra para que nos permita instalar los equipos y pedimos por el buen funcionamiento de esta. La siembra. Sembramos en familia, con trabajo comunitario, con la esperanza siempre de conseguir una buena cosecha. Se canta la Madre Tierra y se pide al universo o alguna divinidad nos ayude a que este esfuerzo se vea reflejado en buenos frutos. Así se lleva a cabo la instalación de la telefonía celular comunitaria entre el personal de TIC-AC y gente de la propia comunidad hasta que éste quede en óptimo funcionamiento. La comunidad, con ayuda de un proveedor, coloca una torre que soportará a los equipos de la telefonía celular. Se programa y realiza todo el soporte técnico y mantenimiento para que funcione a lo largo del tiempo. Después, la organización entrega formalmente a la comunidad su certificado de operación que la acredita para poder operar legalmente su propia red de telefonía celular. Y culminamos con la fiesta, que nos recuerda que hay que celebrar que tenemos telefonía celular propia y que estamos instalando un patrimonio para las nuevas generaciones. Cuidado de la siembra. Toda siembra debe ser cuidada y protegida. Se requiere remover la tierra y combatir ciertas plagas. Así la telefonía comunitaria debe manejarse y operarse adecuadamente y en conjunto. Esto lo hacemos a través del acompañamiento legal, tecnológico, organizativo, administrativo y comunicacional que TIC hace, brinda y el compromiso y atención de la comunidad. La cosecha. Cuando se han desarrollado los pasos anteriores, con compromiso y en conjunto, seguramente habrá una muy buena cosecha. La cosecha en la telefonía celular consiste en volverla sostenible, para que se cuente con acceso a la comunicación y queden ganancias económicas y la comunidad decida en qué servicios de beneficio comunitario utilizarlas. Sugerimos seguir sembrando otras radiobases para ampliar la cobertura y lograr, poco a poco, que otras localidades cuenten con este servicio. Hay que sembrar bien, si queremos cosechar bien, y comprender que es un proceso que requiere tiempo, cuidado y trabajo colectivo para que rinda frutos.